Welcome guys, this is God Talk and this is Kelly and Anna and we are excited to be here today. It's always um, a good day to get together and um, find out what God's talking about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Wednesday. Um, my house is a disaster. I feel like it becomes a mess by the middle of the yeah. week. Um, everything's a disaster by yes. the middle of the week that's yes. why it's that's why I always like getting together because um this time just clears me mm-hmm. of that stuff and kind of resets for the rest of the week mm-hmm. you know yeah you know sometimes I get stressed out because um I'm claustrophobic and so I like things to be clean I like space mm-hmm. um and so when my kids have their toys everywhere especially they always put it in the middle of the walkway why mm-hmm. like from the front door to the kitchen all the toys are laid out right where we walk yep it drives me nuts um but then I have to make a very conscious purposeful choice to feed my spirit instead mm-hmm. of getting frustrated and mad and just be in that place of just madness yeah yeah isn't it <laughs> so, funny like that even those things can drive you to a positive or a negative it's mm-hmm. your choice you know that's what you know I've I mean, I can't always say this, but I think it's interesting. That's something that I've been working on for years. Like when the kids do something stupid or something happens, somebody's mad. Even like breaking um, a glass or something like mm-hmm. that. I used to be like, why did you do? Why didn't you think about? What, what, what? You know, and then I'm like, you know what? I can't bring that glass back. Mm-hmm. And it's just a glass. Mm-hmm. I can buy another one, you know. I am like, okay, guys, you know, you should think before you do this because this is how things get broke, you know, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's just something about getting rid of the anger Yeah. and realizing that, well, you know, life's not over because of a glass Mm -hmm. or because of toys in my way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Like my oldest likes to, um, whatever she's drinking gets spilled like all of it will get spilled and that's her thing and when I was a little girl things would fall out of my hand so I couldn't pick up glass or dishes mm-hmm. because it would automatically break mm-hmm. and my parents would be like what is going on mm-hmm. and whatever even if it was a book it would fall to the floor and I'm like I don't know what's wrong like it just it just falls <laughs> it just away from my it. hand well I see it with my oldest she whatever is liquid gets spilled mm-hmm. um and so it's just like learning to have grace Uh with her just like I would have wanted grace when I was little um maybe you try lids yes (laughs) you know maybe that's a good option my husband went to Walmart and he got water cups Uh um with the lids and they have like these little plastic stoppers Uh so that even if you put it upside down water doesn't drip down like best idea ever right it's genius (laughs) yeah so yeah yep well, so, um, you were telling me this week that you had, that God gave you some scriptures. Yes. So, um, I wrote it down. I have a journal where I'm writing down, you know, what the Lord is, is showing me and what he's speaking to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was, I put the, I write the dates down. So June 27, I think this was last Friday. Um, yeah, that would have been Friday or Saturday, I think. Okay. Um, so this was in the morning. Um, I, I hear the Holy Spirit say, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Mm. And so, and so I know that that's a scripture because I've heard that before, mm-hmm. read. Um, so I looked it up and it's Romans 8, 14. Okay. And when I looked it up, that whole chapter, Romans 8, yeah, it's like, is like so powerful and so mm-hmm. good. Um, so I'm going to go through it here. I got my Bible now too. I'm so Yay! excited because before I'd use my phone, but we record on my phone. So yeah, let me see if I can. Okay. Well, you can go ahead. And... Okay. Um, so Romans 8. So um, I'm reading in my version app. And so the title of this passage is Life in the Spirit. Mm. Um, so it says here, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. 
The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if you, through the power of the Spirit, put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Mm. So I'll stop there at verse 14. Um, but then it keeps going. And so this this passage was so good and so amazing. Um, Which one was that? You're saying? Romans 8.14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we went to that workshop on Monday mm -hmm. that was about learning mm -hmm. how do we how do we react and how do we act if we are slaves and servants versus if we are sons and daughters mm -hmm. of God. Right. And that was a huge eye opener. And in the workshop, that verse, that whole passage was read. I know. I so, so this is so God is confirming because guys, we don't what we used to get together and talk beforehand discuss and write things down but we really felt like i i personally get distracted and overwhelmed with the thought of following the outline and everything and um i prefer to let the holy spirit lead and we just found that it flows better if we do that mm -hmm. so really we don't really talk too much before we start recording mm -hmm. and so i've been going through galatians and it's talking about those things and then last night i was into ephesians and it's talking about you know you once you were under the law and now you're of the spirit and um so all these things that you're talking about and the same was for me monday night when um basically they were um well you just said like they were mm -hmm. talking about you know when you when you're living your life as a christian um and you you don't even realize there's the airplane because it doesn't want me to <laughs> yes. like, ah. uh -huh. um, but when you're living your life as a christian and sometimes we don't even realize it we're we're going back to the law in our spirits because we're we're trying to do this and do this and everything mm -hmm. um but you don't have that condemnation. You don't have all that stuff mm -hmm. as a child of God. Um, so I was trying to think if I wrote this Monday night or if I wrote this after. I think I may have wrote this after, but mm -hmm. I don't remember. Um, we're no longer slaves. We're God's heirs. Mm -hmm. We're heirs to his throne or to, you know, his kingdom. So that's Romans eight fifteen. the verse that follows. Okay. Is that you're no longer slaves. Okay. So... Um, release the laws and receive the love. And Abraham had two sons. One was of a, to a slave woman, and that was according to the flesh. She bears children who are slaves. And this, these are the two covenants, too. That was a covenant made on Mount Sinai. And then um, the other one is a free woman, born with the re results of divine promise, bears children who are free. 
Mm-hmm. So we're no longer, we're not slaves, we're children. Um, sons of slaves are persecuted. We'll never share an inheritance with the free woman's son. So um, you're not under the yoke of slavery. You're born by the power of God. Um, but it's just really interesting because in my own life and my own struggles um, growing in my walk with Christ and learning more about him and learning that how he speaks to me how he's really alive and real today and he's working and moving and he's using me as an instrument or like a conduit for yes. him and it's real mm-hmm. um, I've also realized that the enemy has tried to steal my identity from a young age and and part of he does that with all of us because he doesn't want us to know who we really are in Christ because if we realized who we were in Christ we would be way more powerful Mm -hmm. we we would believe in our authority we have Mm -hmm. and um you know that's something when when you are not not to get crazy, but like if you're casting out a demon, if you're praying over someone, those those demonic things, they don't see you. They see the blood of Jesus. Yes. They see Jesus because you're a reflection of Jesus Christ and they hate that. But they have no authority over that. And that is what the fear is. So, so regaining my identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I've grown a lot. But that, the way this guy talked about this Monday night, just kind of, I really need to sit here and absorb more of it too. But Mm -hmm. he was just talking about, you know, if you went and um, God gave you a word for someone um, and you do it out of a slave perspective, Mm -hmm. um, you're going to, you're going to do it in fear. You're going to do it in, there's a lot of, Mm -hmm. a lot of, um. It's just not... What am I trying to say, Anna? <laughs> so so I see it as um, there's now no condemnation where if you're operating out of that slave mentality, then there could be judgment and condemnation mm-hmm. to the way you phrase and your tone of voice even. Yeah. Um, versus operating from a son and daughter right. perspective. It's all... And then in believing that it's all from Christ mm-hmm. and, and that it, the birth, you know, that... Um, burden of did I do this right did I do this this way this way it's not on you and I mean you're under you're under Christ now Mm -hmm. you I mean you definitely you want to make sure you don't I mean there's rules to that you know Mm -hmm. uh, prophesying over people Um, you know there's certain things to intercede when you learn about someone and not necessarily to tell them you know there's different there are definitely um things that we need to know and grow in Mm -hmm. and um boundaries to set and things like that but it's just understanding who you are in Christ and and realizing you know I I get caught up in was this you know was this this or what you know um the confusion and chaos is not from God Mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's more from religion Mm -hmm. those you know Mm -hmm. so what did he? Where is that? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I think I wrote it down on another page, but okay. Let's see. So that's one of the things I'm learning right now is how to live life in the spirit. Like that's, and it's not me. That's it's not like Anna wants to learn this. No, this is God wants me to learn this. How to live life in the spirit. Um, there is, um, as we're living in the end times, right? Since Jesus resurrected, it's been the end times. And it feels like right now, like you have said, like it's the beginning of the birth pains of everything marching towards, you know, like the spirit of the Antichrist is on the earth. Mm -hmm. And so there's a very sharp contrast right now going on between the children of God. Lukewarmness is out the window. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, we need to get into the Lord, into the word, living by the spirit, um, and so one of the things that the Lord's pointed out to me is how we read Joel, you know, in, mm-hmm. in the book of Acts when Peter was speaking by the Spirit mm-hmm. and talking about Joel's army. 
um, there is Joel's army in training. The Lord mm-hmm. showed me that. Um, and so it's this is the training that's going on right now is hearing the Spirit of God, hearing His voice, following it, mm-hmm. obeying, being obedient to His voice, um, mm-hmm. filling up, filling up on His Word, filling up on prayer. Right. Yeah, speaking to Him. So something that really cool that I experienced yesterday was... Um, on my lunch break, if it's a nice day, I treat patients in the morning and then during my lunch break, I eat and I try to go outside mm-hmm. um, and get away from the computers, from the, there's a lot of electromagnetic radiation that mm-hmm. comes into our bodies and it, it, it'll it affect your body and your, like it'll give you headaches sometimes or some people make some nauseous. Um, so I try to get back into seeing some greenery, into some nature and there's a really cool little trail with a stream where I work. Um, and I try to get out there and um, I have my headphones and so I'll listen to a podcast or I'll listen um, to someone speaking truth or a message or I'll listen to um, my you version app being mm-hmm. spoken. And so um, I really want to read First and Second Peter because he was the first pastor that Jesus instituted mm-hmm. for his church. So I really want to listen to Peter, not read it, but listen to it like in the original mm-hmm. way where the word, um, the letters were read mm-hmm. to the people, the, the church, the house churches. And so I really wanted to listen and I just felt the Lord in my heart tell me, hey, come and talk with me. Mm-hmm. Let's Let's just talk. And I was like, okay and I had a moment where I could doubt and be like oh that's just me making Mm -hmm. that up or I can say all right all right I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I feel like the Lord's putting on Mm -hmm. my heart and so I left my phone in the car I was like all right I'll do it Mm -hmm. and I just started walking and talking and like I could hear the Holy Spirit talking to me Mm -hmm. in my heart and he just has so many he was just pouring his love on me Mm -hmm. he has so many beautiful things to say to me and so I just stayed um, nourishing like the spirit of God mm-hmm. versus um, my mind and my mm-hmm. intellect because I'm very left brain and intellectual right um, so I was just nourishing that and just talking with him and he was just talking to me and it wasn't like a conversation mm-hmm. like blah, 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 blah. it wasn't yeah. like that it was just he was like whispering phrases mm-hmm. and then he would continue the sentence and mm-hmm. then I would keep walking and then he would w- whisper another mm-hmm. word and then I was just putting those pieces together right. and as I came back to work like in my inner man I would inner woman I was refreshed yeah and it was like that verse that says even though outwardly our bodies are mm-hmm. decaying inwardly we're being renewed right and he actually told me that he's like you're re- I'm renewing you yeah. right now yes so. so that's that is um it's interesting because I know there's a group of people out there that would not like hearing that um but my own experience Mm -hmm. and um your experience and you know you definitely have to have your bible you definitely need to know your foundation Mm -hmm. and you need to know the bible well but there is nothing wrong with that that is beautiful in fact that's called relationship Relationship. that is relationship the lord wants a relationship with us he doesn't want us to to say okay i know I know the rules of the Father, and so I'm going to follow the rules, and that's how my relationship with the Father is. I mean, you know, we know right from wrong, Mm -hmm. and we do what's right because we love the Lord, and He is in us, and He first loved us. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you have to grow somewhere in there to listen to him. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying he speaks audibly every once in a while. He might. He does. But um, learn to hear his voice. Learn to see how he communicates. He communicates different with different people. Mm -hmm. But that's so beautiful and important. We, and especially in this time right now, more than ever... We have to have relationship Mm -hmm. with Christ. You know, read your Bible and then take that time and sit in in quiet without your intellect. Like you said, put your things to the side and wait and to hear from the Lord. And just tell him, God, I'm here and I'm I'm listening. What do you have for me today? What do you what do you want to say to me? What do you want me to know? What do you want to reveal to me? And and that's learning it what I found is like in dreams in visions even in reading your bible the more you read 
the more you grow, the more he gives you, the more wisdom and understanding for the word he gives you, the more you dream and you write it down and you're attentive to what he's given you at night, you write it down, he gives you more. You go and pray for people, he gives you more faith. He builds you up to do it more. Do you have to, it, when you take that step forward, he takes a step forward. He wants to work through us, mm -hmm. but he wants us to want it too, mm -hmm. you know, and he, believe me, he's always there seeking a relationship, but, um, it's like, he's waiting for us to turn around and say, okay, I'm mm -hmm. ready, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, um, I definitely encourage, I've been doing that too, Anna, just taking that time with him, you know, sometimes, because when I go on my walks, there's times where I listen to a lot of sermons, and then there's times he says, nope, I need you to only read the word today, or I would like you to only read the word today, and then there's other times where he's like, you know, why don't, why don't you worship, and mm -hmm. then see what I'm saying, and then after that, he's like, you should read the Bible now, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, sometimes it's prayer time, you know, ask him where he wants to go in his time with your time with him. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to lead me today, Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, it's because it's not a one sided relationship. It's not like, okay, I read my Bible today, God, you know, and so mm -hmm. that's that. And, and today I'm going to do this, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the, the most beautiful amazing the most exciting thing I've discovered this year in 2020 is that God speaks mm -hmm. and growing as a daughter of the king and that I am beloved by him and that he wants to talk with me every day mm -hmm. just like he did with Adam in the garden mm -hmm. like he has brought us back through Jesus back to that original creation of mm -hmm. the garden where he spoke with Adam and Eve yeah. and he interacted with them on a daily basis mm -hmm. and that's what I'm praying that the Lord will take away all the idols in my life whatever needs to be cleared out because I want to keep growing in my intimacy with my with my father mm -hmm. it is the most exciting thing happening in my life it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. You know, in I believe it's the Hebrew calendar. This is the year of the mouth. What does that mean? Well, to get into specific detail, yeah. I'd have to read it to you. Okay. Um, because okay. I and I can't use my phone because we're recording. But mm -hmm. um, from what I've learned about it is, you know, there's what was last year. I forgot what was last year, but. This is the year of the mouth. So if you think about it, it's very interesting mm -hmm. that we are all having to wear masks to cover our mouths. Oh. That we are being silenced. Mm -hmm. That So if you think about that in the spiritual, mm -hmm. that's that battle. The enemy's trying to silence, silence us. Yeah. You know? Um, and then in another sense... You know, your mind can read. You don't necessarily have to use your mouth to read, you know. But um, speak, speaking, you know, also speaking with authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, when we tell people in our healing and deliverance ministry, um, you know, when you're praying against something, when you're commanding something to stop bothering you or taking authority over something, it's very important to speak it out loud. So... The enemy's trying to silence us, you know, in our walk with God, in our in our churches, in um, many many different areas. Mm -hmm. But um, which tells me, this is the time to speak, to be bold, to to move in the spirit, mm -hmm. to pray louder, you mm -hmm. know, to um, to voice what Holy Spirit speaking with what the Bible's saying, what, mm -hmm. you know, what we're called to do. So, mm -hmm. but it's interesting how, how that works. Well, we always say, you know, what's manifesting here on earth is usually a, a um, representation of what's going on in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So, um, lots of crazy, craziness continues for 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we just, I, we're in Kansas, so we just heard the other day that we are supposed to wear masks everywhere we go now. Yeah. Um, I had someone tell me yesterday...
because I work in Wyandotte County, and mm-hmm. they said, as of 5 o'clock tonight, you need to have your mask on. Where's your mask? And I was like, it's over there at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard people say really, um, I think what someone said because the viol- they've, like Governor Kelly violated uh, when she told the churches that they couldn't worship, mm-hmm. and that was that was changed and really it's the same thing with the mask she can't really tell us we have to wear the mm-hmm. mask so that's what um, i found out i talked to one of my friends in law enforcement i said what's what's the penalty if you um, i heard they were gonna find people choose... yeah that's what i heard too that you could get a fine and i was told that at least for our area um is that johnson law County? enforcement yes okay law enforcement is not going to put people in jail for not having a mask in public are they going to so. ticket people I, that part I'm not 100% sure about. Um, I just know I was told nobody's going to jail. Um, you can go to jail if you're asked to leave a private business. And, and you if you don't, refuse, or, then yeah. yes. Then, well, then and that should can. be. I mean, you, we have to respect people's boundaries. And mm-hmm. if it's a private business, that's their choice. Mm-hmm. That's what I wondered if I would have to wear one in my salon because it's a private place. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess if it's a private business, you can make the call. Okay. Because it's more for public public outings in public places Mm -hmm. um so so i will i don't get very political because i don't politicians are crooks and Mm -hmm. very corrupt there's a lot of corruption so i don't get into all that stuff um but i will say i can feel it and i can see how our freedoms are just slipping through our fingers and i am not i am gonna stand up at some point there's a duty Mm -hmm. to stand up for freedom um there is a duty and and I want to do it respectfully and as a believer and with the power of Christ um but I I gotta stand up for freedom I have to right and you know we've been in this transition probably since March you know testing like testing what are the boundaries what are you know what when when does a law or rule Mm -hmm. violate you know God's rules and God's laws and at what point do you switch I mean you know because we've I've grown up believing you know and some of this I I still do believe you know I I believe in my in the cops for the most part Mm -hmm. I mean I understand that there are crooked people out there crooked there are some crooked cops you know I get I get that but for the most part you know the the police have always been a safe place a protection Mm -hmm. you know and um and all these things but what when like I feel like we're growing closer to a time where um things may shift Mm -hmm. there might be a time coming soon where we might have to be like okay you know what that used to be right that may not be mm-hmm. right anymore. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a I have a moral obligation to the truth. Yes. And I have a moral obligation. Spirit. Yes. To when right when wrong is being called right and right is being called wrong, yes. even if it legally mm-hmm. is the is called right but if it's truly wrong i have a moral obligation as an intelligent mature human being to stand up for what is Mm -hmm. right right and i'm not necessarily talking about masks right now no i'm saying what will come eventually Uh you know Uh um or police officers Mm -hmm. you know anything like that but yeah i mean you know the other side to what i was feeling today is i um, I keep hearing that song on the chosen trouble. So I wrote the verse. I wrote the verses down because this is what I've been hearing all morning. Um, the verse, the what the lyrics are. It says, "Throw me like a stone in the water. Watch the mud rise up. Dress me like a sheep for the slaughter. Pour me in your cup. Should have known that we would bring trouble. Trouble's going to find you here. Trouble." <laughs> Trouble, mm-hmm. trouble, trouble. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. This is so good. Uh-huh. You know? um, but my response to that is, okay, God, what are, what are you, what are you talking to me about? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and my thoughts were, okay, <laughs> am I prepared for that? What is that? 
what does that look like? And how do I respond? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and then I, I, some of the things I felt like, like I did like, like you were talking about. So you talk to God and listen and then wait for him to respond. Mm-hmm. And some of the things I feel like he was saying was collect and stock up. And let's see, he said, um, take a re- take a reprieve to access wait to access your assess sorry assess your life and your family and your church and build up our character our our Christ like integrity and mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. that goes along with your morals you know what is truth mm-hmm. what is really truth and what are you going to stick to mm-hmm. and um you know, and also, and then he was showing me, you know, he has grace and he has mercy for me. And I'm not going to be perfect and I'm not going to make every decision completely, um, you know, perfect. Um, but he's asking me to step away from the world um, and remember that he's my redeemer, my mis- my restrainer, my sustainer, sorry, and the true end of all things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's nothing that I can boast about except for him. Mm-hmm. There's nothing of true value except for him. Mm-hmm. All the money in the world, all the clothes mm-hmm. and fashion, your house, mm-hmm. you know, your car, your education. Mm-hmm. That can be wiped away in a minute. Yep. But there's only one thing that cannot be taken from you. Isn't mm-hmm. that cool? Yes. The one thing that they no one can ever take away from us is the only thing that we need. He's given us all that we need. All that we need. And all the protection. Mm-hmm. So, um... You know, that's so cool that you're saying that because, um... You know, we go to two different places of worship, mm-hmm. communities of worship, and the series that we've been in is um, Promised Land, and so mm-hmm. the key verse has been, I think it's Second Peter, where it talks about that in him, he's given us all that we need. Mm-hmm. So cool. It is so cool. How he weaves that together. Yeah. yeah. I just, I mean, think about that. That is really amazing. Yep. And huge. Yep. When he prepared us, when he created us, he thought about everything. He thought about all that we would need and all that would be taken away from us. And Mm -hmm. even in the worst times, even in being martyred, Mm -hmm. think about that. He's like, they can't take it away. Mm -hmm. They cannot take it away. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. There are things that are everlasting that are... you know going to eternity and those are the things that matter Mm -hmm. Um, and those are the things that he wants to grow Mm -hmm. and mature in us um, Mm -hmm. in that relationship with the Lord and then there are things that are very temporal and once we truly are aware and accept that there are temporal things and we Mm -hmm. truly on purpose grow the things that are everlasting Mm Um, like souls and and people and serving and love Mm -hmm. love is an eternal thing Um, once we grow the things that really matter it's like now you're getting it Mm -hmm. yeah and he said you know to get rid of all the flesh Mm -hmm. all the flesh in me the the fleshly desires the Mm -hmm. you know all of that you think about you know he even says you know prophecy um all these things these gifts will will be done in heaven they won't be we won't need them in heaven Mm -hmm. but we still need love Mm -hmm. we still need his spirit Mm -hmm. you know so um it's just so beautiful Mm -hmm. so that's a lot of work for everybody this week (laughs) yes change our hearts change our minds evaluate your spirit Mm -hmm. um it's time to walk in spirit, not in flesh. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I've been even talking to my girls about that this week. You know, preparing your kids, preparing your heart, your family for, um, you know, for being a real Christian. Yeah. I hate to say that. I mean, gosh, I mean, I would like to think we've always been this whole time. And I'd like to think I have been. But, yeah, I, I have been for a long time in my heart. But he's just drawing every impurity out of me and getting yes. rid of it and washing me cleaner and cleaner and yes. cleaner. You know, and, and when I think he's like, okay, you got this. Now what about this? I'm like, oh, more. <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, that's what I was telling my, my girls is, girls uh, I was telling Mila the other day because she loves fashion and she loves you know she always talks about how she's going to um, marry a rich guy (laughs) and um, go to a sorority and have this car and and send her kids to private school she's 12 guys she's 12 and she has (laughs) no idea and I'm like oh boy but I'm telling her I'm like Mila you know things in this world can change like this Mm -hmm. and there might be a time not that there might be because reality when you're walking with Christ none of these things matter Mm -hmm. but there's there's a time coming where clothes don't matter you're going to be thankful you have clothes on Mm -hmm. you know there's and she's like oh no clothes will always matter always matter (laughs) like no they won't no they won't Uh And I'm like, you need to, you know, you make sure you're checking your spirit here. I know she's slightly joking, but in her little mind, she doesn't, you know, that's, mm-hmm. these are big things to process. But, mm-hmm. you know, just talking to my girls, because, you know, they think I'm a teenager. And, um, I mean, they've said before, I want to be a teenager. And I'll think about these things later. And I'm like, boy, especially with, with these days, you know, who says you have later? Yep. Who says you have later? Mm-hmm. I mean, Christ... The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Yes. Today. Yes. Don't wait. You don't know. Mm-hmm. And every day is closer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we don't we don't know when, you know, when it's going to get really crazy. We don't know. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd like to think that it's going to get better. And it could get better before it gets worse. But, you know... Prepare your heart. If not, prepare your heart. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing that matters. You can prepare your home and your physical stuff after that, but prepare your heart. Yes. Um, so I want to read this from my devotional here. It's about hunger. Hunger is an interesting phenomenon. It moves people to do strange things. Stealing is forbidden in scripture, for instance, but Solomon seemed to show sympathy to the thief whose stealing is motivated by hunger. And even though the thief must repay what is stolen, Solomon said that the man is not despised in his community, Proverbs 6.30. Unusual behavior is more excusable when a person is hungry. Spiritually hungry people often show similar traits. Protocol seems to fly out the window for those with extreme hunger for God. I have watched shy people become loud, timid people become aggressive, and the complacent become extremely bold in their faith. It is beautiful. It is one thing that is certain to bring fulfillment of the Hebrews 11:6 definition of faith. He is a rewarder of those who seek him. Hannah lived out the same reality when she appeared drunk before the priest, but was actually intoxicated with a desperate prayer for a child. Eli understood and excused her bizarre behavior brought on by this hunger. This kind of hunger comes out of the conviction of the goodness of God, who gives good gifts to his children. It exists because people believe he keeps his promises. People seldom come to this conclusion through Bible study alone. In the end, it requires diligent pursuit of what the Bible reveals. It would not be an exaggeration to call this hunger a burning within. It is ignited by God, but sustained through the cooperation of the individual. Mm. Um, 
sadly, some people would have no ministry at all if they could not critique and criticize others. Mm -hmm. They are not known for what they believe. They are known for what they oppose. They have no history of igniting or sowing into moves of God. Instead, they are known for critiquing the meal that others enjoy. They remind me of restaurant critics who cannot cook. (laughs) (laughs) Faith has such a different approach to truth. Yes, deception is a concern, and yes, the devil exists. But faith expressed in hunger is much more convinced of God's goodness and his promise to satisfy than it is of the devil's ability to steal, kill, and destroy. The hungry become preoccupied by the one. He is available to those who pursue with reckless abandon. He comes with the ability to keep them safe. At the center of this kind of faith is humility, for it causes a person to lean into a situation, expecting God to speak and give direction. Faith anticipates good because God is good. Faith with hunger is more gullible than suspicious. Mm. I love that. Hunger. That's where I'm at. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And that goes right along with what we're saying. Mm -hmm. You need to be hungry for Christ right now. You need to be so hungry Mm -hmm. that you can't live off anything else, that your clothes aren't going to matter, that you're, Mm -hmm. you know, it's time to be hungry. Yeah. It's so time. Mm -hmm. It's like really, you know, the old days, (laughs) pre COVID, Mm -hmm. now we're going to call it the old days, um, when you would just, you know you're not seeking God you're not praying you're not in the word throughout the week and then you go to church and you get just this little bite on mm-hmm. Sunday morning for an hour mm-hmm. for an hour of church um that superficial like five miles wide one inch deep kind mm-hmm. of um Christianity um, it's over it's it, over it, it's over <laughs> it is over hard times are coming like the church of Jesus Christ that's not has, gonna sustain you right it, it has always been persecuted. That has mm-hmm. always been the history of the church. It has always been persecuted. The children who belong to God, who have the spirit of God, have always been persecuted. Right. And um, you see the freedom slipping mm-hmm. away from this country because yeah. its foundation is no longer right. on the truth of Jesus. But it's on feelings and it's on um, pleasure. Right. And it's on um, worshiping false idols. Mm-hmm. And over and over again, the Bible, God shows us in history that people who who build their house on the sand Mm -hmm. the house will fall when the storm comes it will fall but those who build on the rock who is jesus those are the people that stand and so even if you are martyred even if your body is destroyed this is temporal Mm -hmm. and so you will still live on in a glorious freedom of the children of god so it is time to be building on him in a daily kind of way, not just on a Sunday morning, one hour kind of way. And I'm saying yeah. this, um, and I feel the Holy Spirit just right now wanting me to make this point is even as churches are being opened up now, like I know, I think your church mm-hmm. is this coming Sunday is officially like the kids ministry is yeah. up and running and everything. Um, the church I've been going to, the kids ministry is up and running. And so as people are coming back, you cannot get complacent you cannot Mm -hmm. because there is a big push to shutting things down again Mm -hmm. and so enjoy it like soak into the fact that you're surrounded with other believers and you're worshiping him but there needs to be a daily time and setting a goal like Mm -hmm. goals are very important um are you spending 20 minutes with him are you spending an hour with him because church isn't your god consistently church is not your god it's holy spirit Mm -hmm. and you know Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you got to spend time with Him. Mm-hmm. Sunday morning's not enough. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not enough. That's, and that's not, just a little And bike. usually it's not deep enough either. It's not deep enough because there's a time constraint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there are things that the Lord wants to talk to you and wants to show you. Um, and in it, it, you gotta get in, you gotta have that closet time. You gotta have that quiet time. Like Jesus said, where Mm -hmm. just your father in heaven sees you and it's you and him, Right. you know, and when you're fasting, like, I think it's really funny how, you know, and I'm part of this culture. I'm part of this, you know, this nation where, you know, you see these pictures and people are like, Oh, I'm in quarantine. I'm just getting super fat. (laughs) But if you look at it from a godly and heavenly perspective this is a time to be praying and fasting mm-hmm. you know and yeah. get get your body healthy that's right. that's your tool yeah. to go out into the world and um it's just time to not condemnation i'm not saying this in a spirit of criticism or condemnation it's time to start take the first step mm-hmm. just take the first step and start 
feeding yeah. the things that are eternal. Yeah. I mean, even I'm I'm starting to feel like he's calling me to more time with him. Mm-hmm. I I I spent the way more time than the average person does with him, but still it's not enough. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking where else can I get that? I might have to wake up early. Mm -hmm. I might have to go to bed early. I might have to set, you know, a certain hour, an extra hour out of my day Mm -hmm. out. Um, But, guys, if you don't have any time set aside for him, start with 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And as you get there, just keep stretching it. Just keep stretching it. But there's no condemnation wherever you're at. Mm-hmm. But more. We need more. We need more. Your, your spirit needs more. Your yes. spirit needs more. And he longs for more. He loves you. He wants that time with you. I mean, you can't be married and never spend time with your husband, right? Mm-hmm. And if you do, is it what kind of marriage is it? Mm-hmm. You know? So, mm-hmm. uh, it's just... It's just time to be hungry. I think that's yeah. great. That's a great way of saying it. So. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I think that wraps up for this week. That was Yes. Good. So, all right. Well, we look forward to being back next week. And Have a great week. Yes. We'll see you soon.